Being unable to read, the board denies you permission to enter the United States. Have you any further statement to make? Do as you please, she answered. The alien is unanimously excluded as a person unable to read, excluded, and ordered deported. Leah Michelle is investigating the fate of her great-grandmother, Benuta Visi, who immigrated to America in 1918. She's just discovered that Benuta was ordered to be deported because she was illiterate. I mean, that's so unbelievable. It seems so harsh. In that a way. was the law. If, if yeah. you could not read or write, they would deport you. Immigrants like Benuta Visi, who arrived in America during World War I, faced growing fear and prejudice toward foreigners. The 1917 Immigration Act targeted those who couldn't read as undesirable and likely to become a financial burden on the government. But because deportations back to Europe were put on hold during World War I, immigrants who failed the test were stuck in the chaos of Ellis Island, indefinitely detained and unable to return home. They're not uh, quickly sending immigrants back because of the war. So the whole immigration inspection process is kind of uh, in turmoil here. OK. So this is from Morris V.C., August 14th, 1919. This is a year later. Yes. Borough of Immigration, Department of Labor, Washington, D.C. My fiance, Bonita V.C., has been excluded by the Department of Labor on account of illiteracy and interned in Gloucester, New Jersey. So she was taken to Gloucester? New Jersey and Gloucester. She was detained down there because Ellis Island was uh, used for the military. Because of the war. Right. She was admitted to this country temporarily on the day of the 16th of November, 1918, on the condition to be deported at convenience. We see here that during that time, she was actually released on parole. Right from Gloucester, and she can go on the street, she can right. work and all that. Oh, OK. But she's still eligible to be deported. She's not officially entered into the country. So she's been on parole, basically, from November to August 14th, 1919. At least up until August. So going back to the letter from Morris, I take the liberty of laying the bare facts of the situation before you. On account of the big fire of August 18th, 1917, which destroyed the greater part of Salonika, has doubled its sorrows and made for any human being unfit to live. The only protection which my fiance has over there is a suffering old widowed mother without any living means. Therefore, sir, you can picture what may be the future of this young lady if she is deported. I mean, that's just terrifying to think about. There's really nowhere to go for her. She's in limbo. She's in limbo. Personally, I'm fairly well financially fixed, and I'm in the position of marrying her, and also to take care of her as well. So I appeal to the noble human heart of the American government to permit her to reside forever in this country. In the hope of a favorable reply, I remain faithfully yours, Morris V.C. So well-spoken yep. and so smart. My father, he's very well-spoken like this, too. It's a good appeal. He's making the case that he has some money, right? That, right. that she's not going to be a public charge. He'll take right. care of her. And all he wants is just the threat of deportation to be gone. To be her to be officially landed and a permanent resident. So this is a document between immigration officials. They're talking about her case. A reference to your record will show that the sponsor is the man whom the alien intended to marry. And while it has been impressed upon him that such marriage should not occur, if it is consummated, I doubt whether deportation could be affected legally in as much as she would then be the wife of a bona fide resident of the United States. So they're saying, we hope that she doesn't get married, because once she gets married, then it's going to be very, very difficult, almost impossible to deport her. So here we have now January 14th, 1920. So, so she's been on parole, basically, for about a year and a half. Right. OK. So this is from Ellis Island, about Benuda, VC. Under the date of June 14, 1918, the department directed the de deportation of this illiterate alien. However, it was learned that the alien 
has been married. So we, Smart. They're not just sitting there accepting the decision, right? They're yeah. going to go and they're going to do something. The Bureau has to recommend that in view of the alien's marriage, her admission be made permanent so she can stay. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of like badass a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I've seen a photo oh, really? of their wedding and she looked like all decked out. Well, now we kind of get a sense of why that wedding was so important, too, for her. Good for them. Well, here it says, this is so awesome. The Certificate of Record of Marriage, State of New York, here. October 17th, 1919. How cool! It says, Morris V.C. the groom and Benuda. And that's Kohenka. So I believe that that is what we have as her true maiden name. Kohenka. Okay. And her father's name was, do you know? Isaac. And her mother, Miriam. So then I'm curious as to why Benuda left where she's from and what was going on back there in that sort of turmoil of, of Greece. 